Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about grafting on grafting. Um, you'll hear about all these different varieties of grafting, which include cleft and veneer and approach and um, bud grafting. And there's a whole list of it. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take um, what we've already successfully grafted and now it's created some branches. And we're going to graft on top of that branch. So it's going to go from a graft zone to a selected variety of figs and then we're going to graft another branch on top of that selected variety and you're going to see how we're going to get to enjoy even more figs than just this five in one fig that we've created behind us and also I'm excited to share that we're going to um, sever one of the approach grafts and I'm going to show you um, how we're going to accomplish that in this video as well. Excited to share before we begin our newest addition to the fig garden and this here is called the Gary's Strawberry Fig. I'm hoping you can read that and you can see it's a beautiful specimen tree and we and I picked it up just yesterday from this nursery over here and what's called the Laguna Hills Nursery the and I got to meet the owner Gary um, Matsuka and he's the owner as well as a teacher you can see the address here as well at 1829 North Tustin Avenue in Santa Ana California there's this phone number and there's their website BeginnerHillsNursery.com, and their website has a lot of educational information there as well. He also is a teacher. He's teaching on average every single Saturday morning, um, and you can see his schedule and the topics he'll be presenting. And he's conveniently located right off the 55 freeway in Santa Ana, as we saw, but bordering Orange and Tustin. Um, it's also very conveniently located off the 5 freeway as well. Check out this quick picture that I got to take with the owner and my Gary strawberry fig tree. Check this one out. So they've got a variety of fruit trees here at the Laguna Hills Nursery ranging from apples and peaches and nectarines to plums and they've got a huge variety of figs. Um, and avocados, but I've got a list here which I've taken off their website. Um, some of the figs that they feature within their nursery, check these out. They've got the Black Mission, Flanders, the Gary Strawberry, which we just picked up, the Italian Everbearing, the Jana Seedless Cadota, the Panache, which is the Tiger Fig, Peter's Honey, the Sierra, the Violet de Bordeaux, the White Genoa, and other figs, which um, I'm pretty sure just like some of the more specialists, the smaller stores that you usually have pretty good contacts on getting also varieties that you're looking for as well. Um, and also, hoping it gets this published pretty soon, but they've got a sale that's going on now through Thursday where we got this $24 fig tree or $25 to $24.99 fig tree for just under $20 as they've got a 30% sale that's going on this week through Thursday, I believe. So for those of you that live in the area, this is a great opportunity to get your hands on a lot of specimens, whether they be fruit trees, ornamental trees, roses and shrubs. They've got everything um, and they can also special order, um, I'm sure, with the owner, Gary, which you've got his contact and um, contact information before you even go out there. Um, also, I want to ask you guys, and I haven't asked this of any of you this year, um, but if you do end up living in the area and go into the area, Please let them know about your interest of them carrying the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard product, which we're going to discuss in just a second. Um, but let them know that you'd like them to hopefully stock it, and we're hoping also bring their education onto the Ivory Organics YouTube channel and hopefully launching their YouTube channel as well in the very near future as well. Um, and now to get started, the first topic I want to share with you is we're going to now um, take off the approach graft of the Celestial Fig, which is a purple variety of fig off of our rootstock. So let's get started with that. While you come in, um, you're going to notice how large this fig tree was. If you go back to our um, original fig tree when we started, and this five in one fig tree started off with um, OMG, why cut the giving fig tree? Because we had a very productive green fig tree here in the garden. The flavor was not excellent. It was good. And it's been in the family for over 40 years. Um, so it does have sentimental value and we did want it and I did make some cuttings which are in containers and other places so at least that's preserved but it had such a vigorous healthy rootstock that we decided to use it um, to support as many varieties of desirable figs within the garden 
Um, and that's the reason that we've now got grafted onto it. We've got the green cadota in the back, which now let's come a little closer and you can see some of these fruit. As you're coming closer, you can tell just off the stripes off of this fig. I'm hoping you can capture that in the light. But whenever I see the stripes on, on, on the fig, that's usually a clear indication that you've got the variegated or the panache or the tiger fig. And that's a green fig with white stripes. It's a beautiful looking fig and most growers love the flavor as well. Um, back here is my Kadota green. And you can take a look at all of these figs that it's supporting. We recently pruned, you can notice every single leaf is, is supporting a fig all the way down. Um, and then recently we pruned it right here at the top and now that's creating some more branches so it's going to create more of a bushy low compact growing fig you can mm -hmm. see here near the the tip of the cadota fig we've pruned it about a few weeks back and since then it's now created some more branches we've got three more branches which will create a more compact and bushy um cadota and all of these branches are growing in its desired location as you can see we've got a stake here to pull the branch to grow in this zone the panache which is right here to my left We've also got some strings and some stakes to pull it to grow in its zone. So each of these will have its own amount of space and light for maximum exposure to light to support the maximum amount of fruit. Let's take a look at the other side. Right here in the back is the brown turkey fig. And you can see that it's supporting its first fig right here, right where my finger is. Hoping you can see that. And then over here in the front, my friend Richard in Pendleton, Oregon, actually gave this to me as a cutting from his tree. And we successfully accomplished roots during the winter. And in the spring, we grafted this using the approach graft. And you can see over here, also the first fring, uh, uh, fig of our Chicago Hardy variety. Right there where my finger is. Extremely fast and strong, vigorous grower as well. But then here in the back, We've got another approach graft to now let free. Um, we've grafted it using what's called the whip and tongue method. And you can see here, I'm gonna get some more light on it. So I'm trying to get some more light in here so you can see it. But you can see there's the whip and tongue graft that was done and we've got the scion wood which is a selected variety this here is the this here is the celestial variety of fig that is grafted onto the green rootstock which is connected to this which goes all the way down to the ground and then this here again is a celestial fig which is still in the container you can see here by the label and then this here, we've got approach grafted. And I'm hoping now if we zoom in, you can see how it has since grafted on. Back here. So here we are now on the back side of the graft. This is our last approach graft that we're going to set free today. And you can see that this here is the celestial variety of fig. And it's still down here in the, its container. And you can notice here by its tag, this is the genus species name. And this has been getting its strength through its own root while it's been healing with now the root stalk. And I'm hoping you can see the callus tissue right at the tip of my finger. You can zoom in right there. You can see that there's some callus tissue and some more callus tissue up in there. And the string that I use which is fishing twine which is my preference because I like seeing the graft and I've had this also wrapped in a moist paper towel and then also um, covered in plastic to retain the moisture and then I would take that off every couple of weeks to make sure that there isn't any mold or rot happening but the first thing we're going to do is remove this tie and we're going to accomplish that by taking our razor blade here if you can see that and we're just going to carefully now cut you can see that it's breathing a huge sigh of relief. I'm just barely touching it and the string's pulling back quickly. Just snapping right back. And I'm just going to clean it up. One other thing I've been doing, as this process takes on average about 
six to ten weeks. So we've been doing this for about six to ten weeks. For the last two weeks, I've been severing and cutting back at these points over here, taking my pruners and just cutting into it and encouraging the, the rootstock to support the scion wood. And here we are also at the top, you can see that with, with, with the rootstock, which is from here, but it also grows up to this point and it is supporting all of this growth over here. So what we've been doing over here, you can see how loose it is. It's just barely holding on. Check that out, check that out right there. Let me get the camera a little closer. So you can see how loose that is. And check that out, look at that gap right in there. So it's barely holding on, but it's still alive and growing. What we're gonna do today is we're just gonna finish severing. This out. We just severed now the celestial potted plant that was approach grafted onto our rootstock. So that's the base of it here that was once connected right there. So we've just taken that off. We can now pull this plant off and now gift it to a friend or a neighbor. And I'm actually going to be giving this to uh, my brother that lives in Mission Viejo. So that'll be going down there. And then here we are now with the, um, again, the celestial scion wood or the selected desired flavor. And you can see that it's even got a little baby fig on here, which we're going to remove. By removing the fig, if you take a look on the inside over here, there's a bud that would have also developed. If we select fruit, we're going to miss out on growth. So we want growth to come out. So I'm going to remove the fruit this year with the hope that we gain some more growth. And especially as we're approaching this later part of the year, we're doing this in August and we're hoping to just capitalize on another month or two of growth, hopefully uh, before it goes into dormancy for the winter. And now what we're going to do is remove the rootstock, even though it's alongside of it this here is considered the rootstock as it's connected to the roots down below and the rootstock is ultimately going to support the scion wood that we just approach grafted and you can see again for the last two weeks i've been cutting into it first halfway and then after another week i went a little deeper and now it's like just barely holding on but it is just supporting quite a bit of life up here and what we're going to do now is just prune it all the way through carefully like so. And now we've got this here is the rootstock. And what I like doing when I'm done is tying it on somewhere nearby to see how it eventually wilts while this will continue to remain firm as it is being hydrated and being supported by the rootstock. So all of the energy and the life giving support is going to come from the rootstock into the desired grafted um, scion wood and then support all of this growth. So we're gonna tie that on in just a moment, but before we do, but before we do, we're gonna take our Ivy Organics, which is this Ivy Organics 3-in-1 plant guard protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents. The number one goal at this point is now protection against insects, and what it has, it's also registered material for use in organic agriculture, but are these oils, the castor cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint oils that'll be offering the defense from insects from trying to colonize and live within here or possible beetles and termites from damaging this wood. So we're gonna protect it just as we have all of these other branches. If we take a look over here, this here is the graft with the brown turkey. Um, let's see what else we can see within your vicinity over here where my finger is. That's the graft with the Chicago Hardy. And I don't know if you can capture those other two grafts as well. You can see that they're also coated with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard. But what we're gonna do now is just take our brush here and I've got some product left over from other projects here in the garden. And we're just gonna mix that and now seal it. And I'm hoping you can see it behind this stake. And the reason I've got this staked is this graft was initially supporting a um, black mission fig and that one broke more likely than not because a bird landed on this weak graft. And until it eventually heals over, I mean, right now there's just like, imagine 
spider webs of of unions that have been created, which are you know facilitating the transport of sugars from the leaf down to the roots and the water and nutrients from the soil up back into the leaves. But that exchange is barely holding on and it's only going to get stronger between years one and two and from two to three and then from there it can support you know hopefully hundreds of pounds of figs but until then we've got to keep this light and strong and just as we also pruned back the Chicago harder you can see we took a pretty significant um, cut off of this end to basically keep the weight low and the stress low off of the recent graph that we just did only about six months ago and now let's continue coating that like so. We've, we're coating the prune surfaces on the top as well as the prune surfaces here on the bottom and then we're basically coating all the way around as well to make sure that it remains bug and pest free until it heals. And that's it. And now let's secure this cutting to the stake. And then we're just going to monitor this over the next hour. And that'll be our conclusive evidence that the graft worked. And that, you know, if it's not connected to the plant, that it's going to eventually wilt and die. So we're going to notice that within the next hour. Check this out. So here we are again with the celestial fig. I'm hoping you can see the label. I don't know if we um, share that with you. But you can see the celestial fig. It's a purple variety of fig. We've now coated it with the Ivory Organics 3 one Plant Guard. And now I'm just going to secure this rootstock growth to the stake as well. And we're going to monitor this over the next hour. And that's it. You'll notice this growth over here looks good. This growth over here looks good. And we're hoping to see that this is still going to continue to look good in an hour, whereas this here is going to begin to wilt. This hole that's here in the ground that was created by the pot that we had growing alongside the tree, we can now backfill like so. And we'll be sure to water it as well so that the tree and its roots system can now grow into that space again. And that just about does this particular step. So for those of you that have been following this from the beginning with the OMG, Why Cut the Giving Fig Tree, we brought this down to this point right over here where my hand is. It was originally about a 15 to 20 foot tall tree. We pruned it at this point to encourage what we gained was two branches on this side and three branches on this side over here on my left. So we've kind of got this like slingshot shaped branch. Um, and even before that, it was a single tree that was here in the middle that shot about eight feet tall that we brought down to about six inches to 12 inches off the ground to create these two branches. And then these two branches we pruned severely to create these five branches. So we've, we're gonna end up with a pretty compact style tree. What we're now gonna do just because of the, um, the recent celestial fig that we just created on this side, to encourage more growth over here to match what's happening over there, we're going to have to remove some of the apical um, dominant tips to bring more growth onto this zone over here. So what we're going to do here, and again, when it comes to this particular branch, which is only supporting these two varieties of figs, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these tips over here of the Chicago Hardy, and I'm just going to remove those top three or four leaves. And what that's going to do is these leaves are, are responsible for creating the hormone auxin. The roots are responsible for the hormone cytokinin. By removing the oxen tips, there's going to be a surplus on this particular side of the plant of cytokinins. And the cytokinins are going to encourage more growth to come out as well. So we're just carefully pruning the tips. I'm going to leave that one Chicago hardy fig that we saw earlier there. But I'm removing all of these tips to maximize, encourage more growth into this particular tip of the celestial purple variety of fig that we just grafted. Um, so that's just another principle, another concept to consider doing um, when grafting a multi-variety um, multi tree. So aside from now letting that approach graft 
free and it's off to its start on growing onto that rootstock on its own. I want to talk about the concept of grafting on grafting and that's another thing that can be accomplished quite easily. And my favorite method for those of you that watch is doing the approach grafting. It's a, a process that can be done spring, summer and early fall and being that we're now in the middle of August it's a race against time. And my goal in this project is, so my goal in this video is to take the Gary Strawberry that we got from the Laguna Hills Nursery and to then graft it onto the Chicago Hardy. But I don't want to lose the Chicago Hardy. But what we're going to do is, because the Chicago Hardy has two main branches, as you can see, we've got this branch over here, and then we've got a branch behind it. And it's the branch behind it that's supporting the fig. But this one here is like another vigorous growth that I can pull out and grow into this zone, keep the Chicago Hardy up in this zone, and then we'll have the celestial fig that we just um, removed off the rootstock growing in the back zone. So we can still have three varieties on this side just as we have the three varieties on the back side. And now we can take this 5-in-1 fig and turn it into a 6-in-1 fig by grafting onto existing grafts. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this um, branch here and basically do an approach graft onto this branch over here and convert this Chicago hardy branch into a Gary Strawberry. And let's check out those steps on doing the approach graph. So we're going to go back in time and see how that's actually in fact accomplished. Check this out. Let's get started. This is how we're going to begin. I have over here my tools. And again, the goal is we're going to use a razor blade like so. I'm going to make sure I've got it sterilized. So I'm just taking my cloth here and I just put on it some rubbing alcohol. And we're just going to clean the tool like so. And now we're just going to make our cut into the um, into the rootstock side. And you can see here we've got, um, I'm trying to decide where I'm going to want to connect them. One of the cuts is going to go up the tree and the other one is going to go down the tree. And what I've done here is I've aligned the two nodes. So this is going to be my starting point. You can see this line is the node where it was once a leaf. Right there is the line of the node of the green rootstock. This here is the node of the black mission rootstock. So I've aligned those together. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to cut down into the rootstock like so. And I'm gonna continue cutting until I get about halfway into the stem. So we're going down, down, and down. And my goal here, if you can zoom in, and it's gonna be a little tricky, but I don't want to break the stem, but you can see that this is the bark, and then right under the bark is the green tissue, and the green tissue is the cambium tissue, and that's the where the life of the tree is, is in that green cambium tissue. And then the center white part, if you can get in there, is the wood or the supporting structure of the tree. So the goal here with um, this graft is to make sure the two cambium tissues are touching, and if I can't get both of them, because you can see that the size of these two stems are different, I just need to get one. If I get, If I just align it down the center, then I'll get no no alignment with the cambium tissues. So here we go now. That went down, so now I'm gonna do the same cut going up. So here we go. And the goal is to not go past halfway. I'm trying to get as close as I can to the middle without going past. And that should be enough. And what we're gonna do is we're now gonna take These two together, trying to fit them in here. And we're gonna press that down like so. And you can see what we've done here is we've got these two cambium tissues touching right in there. And this is gonna be the union that's gonna heal these two. Eventually, this backside will be removed and the bottom of this will be removed, and this will become the new tree to support the black figs on top of the green rootstock. Let's tie this in place now. So I like using my fishing twine. I've been doing it like this for over 20 years, but you can use any other type of string that you choose. I just like seeing the graft because I do like to peek on it from time to time, whether it's once a week or every few weeks until it actually heals, and I just like watching to see the heel underneath this twine. So I'm just gonna wrap it a few times, and now I'm gonna try to squeeze them as tight as I possibly can. And 
Here we go. And we'll just keep wrapping that all the way up. And then squeeze and wrap. So every few times I go around, I just tighten it up a little bit more. We're forcing these two to become one. And the great part about this is both of them are still alive. Even though I've injured it quite significantly and you can see the white sap that's coming out of it, it's, they're gonna heal together. They're both getting resources from their roots individually and they're both gonna have leaves in the next week or two and that's gonna make their new sugars. And you can see on the back side here, if you come around, as I tighten this, you'll notice as well that the back side is not as aligned, again, because of the difference in size, as well as we did on the other side. You can see the cambium tissues on the thicker um, stem is not in line with the thinner stem. But again, we only need one side of those cambium tissues to touch one another, and we're gonna have, and we're gonna have a successful graft. So what most growers will do is take like a parafilm plastic and what parafilm does is when you wrap it around the plant is it sticks upon itself you can stretch it quite a bit and it removes any air pockets it makes a very tight seal and it sticks upon itself quite well um, i would even maybe tie it with a rubber band at the end but what it does is it um, traps all of that moisture within the plant might and you can see how, how well it sticks but there's actually no glue or anything sticky in here um, but what i've been doing for the last over 20 years i've been doing this since i was in seventh grade successfully is taking any damp paper such as this paper napkin and i'm just going to wet it like so and the goal here again is to keep the joint moist and if that's what's so important in making sure your graft works why not keep it moist with a moist paper towel like so and now that's going to remain nice and cool and damp then we're going to wrap it with our plastic um, material we can use now we can use the parafilm that i've got here i've got so much of it um, you can also use a plastic bag reynolds wrap anything to trap this moisture within the plant so we'll just now wrap it like so And then we'll get our twine here. <laughs> and basically trap all that moisture in place like so. And we'll just wrap that one more time. In the next three weeks I might open it up just to make sure that there's no mold or rotting going on in here uh, but typically it doesn't and I might want to change the dressing on it and put another um, another moist paper towel on it and I should notice again in the next three to four weeks that it's going to be calloused over um, and that the healing is beginning what I'm also going to do while I'm here and take my pruners it's right behind you So what I'm going to do here as well is I'm going to take my pruners and I'm already going to start training this plant to start nourishing my black fig. And so this here is the green fig stem. I'm going to go up one or two nodes and basically prune it like so. I usually go about a quarter inch above the node and we'll remove that like so. And that's already going to start training the plant to put more of its resources, more of the hormones and stuff and the growth is going to go into this lower part and I'm hoping it starts feeding into the desired scion wood. And eventually I'll be bringing this down, like I said, um, to the point of this graft. And we're going to remove that. And that'll be a video we'll be doing um, in the upcoming couple of months. So here we are back at our celestial approach graft fig that we just severed from the parent plant. And it's now entirely relying on the graft to the parent. And you can see that it's still in great condition. The original rootstock that we cut off from up above <coughs> that we cut off from up above 
we had um, secured to the stake and you can notice now that the leaves are starting to wilt and dry compared to these leaves if you can come in a little closer you'll notice they're still firm and upright and healthy so we know we've accomplished success you can see that this is starting to dry I'll leave this here and by tomorrow we'll see the contrast even more so as this continues to flourish and grow while this continues to dry out and die so here we are about 24 hours later as you can see the top of the rootstock which is right here let's remove it now again we only tied that on to the stake for experimental purposes to show how it shriveled and died within the last 24 hours whereas the celestial fig is still upright and growing well so this is off to a good start as it continues to grow towards the um, Chicago hardy fig we will stake it back using this stake. We've also got the stake in place to support in case a bird lands on it until it gains its strength in this position. But we'll continue to pull it back into this direction over my shoulder. The Chicago Harder will continue to fill in this zone. And then we've just completed the approach graph um, over here. And I want to give credit to Richard um, Bertrand in Pendleton, Oregon, who gave me both of these figs. I know I was supposed to use the Gary Strawberry, which I'm going to find another place because We'll turn this into now what's going to be a seven and one. Um, so right now we're going to hopefully once this heals, we'll have a six and one fig. Um, but if you want to come in a little closer, I know we just um, shared the approach graph technique. But if you take a look in here, you can see the approach graft. And when it comes to green wood, it's typically recommended that you put green on green. Um, and as the wood hardens, it'll turn brown. And as it hardens, it'll turn brown. So when grafting, you want to also graft typically related wood, being green on green or brown on brown. So in this case, we've done green on green. Let's zoom in here so you can see the approach graft. We've got the cambium tissues lined. And now I just want to share um, the concluding part, which is what I call the Malky method. And this is a method I've been doing for over 20 years. And as you can see successfully, as we've done this with each of the other grafts, we were doing this with the approach graft, but it applies even more so when doing a cleft or a bark or any other graft um, where we've just dampened this towel and now we're going to keep the zone moist and we're going to check on it on about an every other week basis just to make sure there isn't any rotting going on and if so we're going to just replace it and we can expect within the next um, typically the graft is accomplished within about two weeks but within the next um, six to ten weeks it should be strong enough healed to then sever um, the parts just as we did over here and allow the approach graft and this will now be the um, the green Isha that'll be on top of the Chicago Hardy which is now on top of this green rootstock which is you know our family heirloom and we're now going to wrap that like so and then we're going to secure it in place. And again, we're just taking our twine and the goal is to, um, so we've taken the green, um, so we've taken the moist paper towel, dampened it, and then we went over it with any plastic material to retain the moisture and we're going to secure that well over the top and then go back down towards the bottom and then we'll tie that in place And that's it. Like I said, within the next six to 10 weeks, we'll now have the green issue growing on top of the Chicago Hardy. And um, hopefully we'll get to share those results with you as well. So my passion in gardening actually started off with grafting when I was 10, 11, maybe 12 years old. And 
Um, when it comes to grafting methods, there is a different type of grafting that can be done pretty much any time of the year. Being that we're approaching fall, the most popular method in the fall is what's known as bud grafting. I'll put some links to some articles that I've read that can be also helpful in your understanding of grafting and how to accomplish it. So bud grafting is typically done in the fall, heals in the fall, and then comes out with growth in the spring. Um, in the late winter is a wonderful time for doing almost the other 80 to 90% of grafting methods, which include cleft, bridge, crown, veneer, bark, whip and tongue and splice, and the list continues on and on. And again, I'll put that article down below where you can do that. Um, I'm gonna finish my grafting project um, later, but be sure to subscribe so you can see the finished results so we can, in fact, share that one-on-one -on -one, um, that graft on graft um, video experience with you. And then also for those of you that love grafting and you wanna share your results with me, um, just go to, just publish your results, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you are, and just go hashtag IV Organics, or it could be in the singular or the plural, I'll find you. Um, so hashtag IV Organic, and share your favorite grafting results in your garden so I can check out what's going on. Or if you have any problems, it's a great place for us to communicate then I can share some more additional tips and advice with you as well. Um, I'm also sitting very close to my California native sunflower plant. I don't know if you see that, and there's a lot of activity happening here with the bees. The one last tip I wanna share with you on grafting is grafting works very well between related species. If you've got an avocado seed, for example, even if it came from a Haas avocado, it's no longer a Haas. So you're gonna to wanna to take a stem from your Haas avocado and graft it onto that seed to ensure that you're gonna get the yields and the flavor and the quality of a Haas avocado. Um, so when it comes to avocados, again, if they're related, and even if you're growing a seed variety, it's never gonna be identical to the Haas, so you can graft those um, together. Generally, you don't graft the exact same plants onto one another as they even if you're successful, the compatibility is usually shorter lived than if they're more different. For example, trees in the prunus family um, include cherries, apricots, almonds, peaches, nectarines, um, and apricots. Those are just a few of the fruits that are related that can all be grafted upon one another. And a, um, for example, an Alberta peach on an Alberta peach is gonna be less compatible than putting an Alberta peach onto an apricot rootstock or onto a plum rootstock. So being related will result in better grafting success than grafting it onto itself. And again, why would anybody graft the same plant onto itself? It kind of defeats the purpose of grafting. What grafting does is that rootstock will provide the rootstock, the root strength, the root vigor, whether it be a dwarf variety, if it's got a weak vigor, compared to a standard, which is gonna be the strongest vigor, or a semi-dwarf being something in between. And also your rootstock is gonna offer disease resistance, um, drought tolerance, um, root rot resistance, um, depending on apple varieties, for example, there's different rootstocks that are um, selected specifically for rootstock resistance. And the list continues. So other things, again, grafting can be used for in addition would be grapes, roses, apples we just mentioned, citrus, and the list continues on and on. It's so much fun grafting and I hope you guys pick up something you're interested in doing in your garden. Again, share that result with me at hashtag Ivy Organics. Thanks. So if you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivy Organics, be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of the other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening. Mm -hmm.